Virtually all new modern appliances have electronic control boards somewhere inside the machine. Guess what? They break and can go bad, and when they do, the prices usually to replace them are insanely expensive, often resulting in the entire appliance being trashed. But oftentimes, the culprit is one small component that can be repaired for just a few dollars. I want to show you a tool that can help you out and make it easy to figure out what's bad on an electronic control board. What is in this box? Well, it's called an ESR meter, which stands for Equivalent Series Resistance. This little box with some tweezers will allow you to inspect capacitors on an appliance circuit board or really any electronic control board and figure out if the capacitors are bad. When it comes to appliances, capacitors and relays are by far the most common thing that fails, and replacing them is easy and cheap. The ESR meter, however, is not that cheap to start with, but if you use it two or three times, it's going to pay itself off quickly though. The meter has a colored grid system that will have bars light up when the unit is testing a capacitor. Based on the specifications, you can compare what the resistance is on the capacitor to tell you if it's bad, good, or suspect. This is the first board I want to show you. It is off a Whirlpool washing machine and it's already marked as having a bad capacitor. Let's open it up so I can show you how to test for a bad capacitor. It seems like this one has had a strange run in with a snake on the board, which I don't get, but it is what it is. Now, if you're going to test this by yourself or work on replacing the capacitor, one of these magnetic helping hand setups can work awesome to repair the unit. But in the case for me filming with an ESR meter, I have to ditch it for the video. To use the ESR meter to test the board capacitors, all you need to do is turn the meter on, then use the tweezers to touch the two leads on the capacitor on the underside, and the meter should jump to the left side, showing you how much resistance the capacitor has. And as you can see on the meter, the higher it is, usually the more likely it is bad. On the horizontal scale, there's a capacitor value based in UF or microfarads to tell you what you should look for. I know I've gone pretty fast on the explanation so far, so let's slow it down. The front side of the board has various capacitors on it. And in the case of this Whirlpool board, the capacitors are all in one corner of the board. What you want to do is find out where the capacitors are mounted on the underside of the board. Once you find out the capacitor you want to test, you're going to press the tweezers on the post and you should get a reading on the ESR meter. Sometimes it takes a few moments for the answer to pop up, other times you have to adjust where the tweezers are, but it should eventually in a few seconds give you a reading. Once you have a reading, you need to compare the results to what the capacitor is rated for. Every capacitor on an electronics board will have information on the voltage of the capacitor as well as the microfarad rating. You're going to use the microfarad rating against the chart on the meter to decide if the capacitor is bad, good, or suspect. I'll be honest though, many of the printings on the capacitor specifications are terribly hard to read with your eyes or glasses. If you plan on doing many tests, you'll want to buy an illuminated jeweler's loop, and they are rather cheap to purchase on Amazon. They'll make this job super easy, and I'll have a link to all the tools in the description, by the way. Even though I'm not getting the best connection on these posts, you can see the meter shoot to about one ohm of resistance on this specific capacitor. When you compare this number to the rating on the capacitor, we can see it's 6.3 volts and 1,000 microfarads on the capacitor. This means according to the meter chart, the capacitor is extremely flawed and it should only get about 0.1 ohm of resistance, which would mean it's acceptable. On these style whirlpool washing boards, this capacitor is the one that is most suspect, typically, that causes a lot of board failures. Why is using an ESR meter so valuable, though? This is why. I can fix 10 boards for less than $10 with this capacitor, and our experience is that the single capacitor will cause most board problems on a Whirlpool or Maytag washing machine. When you go to buy replacement capacitors, make sure that the microfarad rating is exactly the same as the one you replace on the board. The voltage can be higher than what's rated on the capacitor board, and it won't damage the board nor its operation as long as it's within about 50 to even 100%. Testing every single capacitor has the same exact process. Find the location of the capacitor leads, and then test them with the ESR meter to see if the capacitor is good or bad. It takes some time getting used to doing this, but it's much easier to do when you do not have a camera and a lighting rig taking up all your room. At any rate, all the other capacitors tested good on this board, on and off camera, so we know exactly what's needed to fix this board 
which is one 6.3 volt, 1000 microfarad capacitor. And I want to say the symptom on this control board on the washer was that it wouldn't run the washing cycles and you couldn't even put the unit into diagnosis. It was essentially dead, but the board did light up slightly. Just for comparison, here's another identical board to the one that we tested that's defective. I'll go over this board real quick on the readings so that you can see that this one is not defective. You can see the culprit from the last board is totally fine on the ohm meter for this unit. Note that you will get some variance on the resistance, even between test to test, but it will be minor and well outside any problematic number in any experience we've had with one of these meters. As you can kind of see with this board, as we go through it, all five capacitors test really good. Some showed a little resistance, but my experience with some capacitors is that they will have a higher value even from the factory when new. It may not start at 0.1 ohms, it may be higher, but it's going to be well within tolerance and it will still be a good board or a good capacitor. Next, I want to show you a pair of Samsung inverter boards for the refrigerators. These are very common to go out and ruin the refrigerator's ability to cool down. There's a ton of capacitors on these boards, so I'm only going to show you the major ones on this type of unit to give you a possible idea of what could go wrong. The first ones we are dealing with are the huge 250 volt capacitors, and I've seen these swell up and leak, which makes the issue easily spotted, but oftentimes they can go bad internally before going bad physically, like most capacitors. The two on this board, though, are testing great. If I grab the other board, the large capacitors also test really well here, too. Now I'm going to slowly go through tests on the other main capacitors on this second board. Note that the board configurations are slightly different because they are different models, but the capacitors themselves look like they're the same values. For example, a 470 microfarad 25 volt unit, and per the ESR meter, this one's bad. Going to the next one, the same size cap is bad as well. So both of them are actually bad. On the inverter board, three of the five capacitors look like they're bad. Now this may sound really bad, but the cost to actually fix all three capacitors is only a few dollars at most, and this is a $150 board brand new. Since I'm only doing the large capacitors, just to show you, let's go back to the first board. Remember these boards, at least for capacitors, we're testing are all the same size and UF rating, but in different locations on the board. And on this board, the capacitor's totally shot for the 25 volt, 470 microfarad rated unit. You'll notice at this point the checks are seemingly going a little bit faster, even though the caps on the board seem to be mostly bad. It's not unexpected though because these boards fail a lot, and we usually have to fix and replace these often. But yet again, the cost to repair all three boards may be a total of 5 or $6 on all the ones I've shown you so far. And you can get capacitor kits that have large numbers of various types of capacitors, and I usually recommend getting one or two of those kits so you may have a lot on hand to fix a lot of different style boards. Sadly, these were the only few boards I was able to fit in today's video. Now, one thing to note is not every single board can be repaired easily. If you have an LG or Samsung washer board or dryer board, they're very difficult to fix due to rubbery conformal coating that you can't easily get through. You can get through them with a hot knife or other device to cut the back side of the plastic panel off, but that's going to be for another video, and quite frankly, we don't actually fix those much ourselves, but those can be replaced with specialty tools. Now, I know this is an ESR meter video, but let's talk relays just for a second to end the video. This is a dryer board. They do feature capacitors, but it's very unlikely that they are what is going to go bad. You're typically going to deal with relays which switch high amounts of voltage on and off, like a modern dryer or stove. The contacts inside the relays typically can be a major culprit of what goes bad. Notice there are two major relays on this unit, and unlike capacitors on this type of board, they have a very high rate of failure over time, and you can inspect the underside of the board or the top side to see damage, like this one here you can see that the soldered connections have been damaged. It's possible that merely by adding solder, you could repair this connection to the relay and have it work. But in most cases, this would suggest that the relay has failed or is going bad. So replacing the relay would be a much better idea. And here's what the relay is actually going to cost on this $200 dryer board. It costs a little bit more than a capacitor, but in the end, it can save you a lot of time, money, and headache if you have the relays on hand 
and can fix the board instead of sending off for a brand new one. Thank you for watching an introductory video to an ESR meter. I hope this encourages you to learn to repair control boards. I will be putting out some more videos in the future about soldering, relays, and a few other fine points. Make sure to subscribe so when that content drops that you'll be able to see it immediately. Have a great day.